Hi leafers, this is Jackin in um, here to answer some questions about myself uh, for tree leaf posterity. <laughs> uh, thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, first question is, um, how did you come to Buddhism and then to tree leaf? And why do you stay? And uh, like so many others here, um, I was always searching for the answer to it all when I was young. Uh, I was raised Catholic and um, there came a time when I felt like uh, the answers that Catholicism gave to my spiritual questions weren't really satisfying. Um, so um, I explored uh, other philosophies and uh, spiritualities and that eventually led me to Zen which resonated right from the start for me. Um, I sat for many years without a teacher and uh, read books by Zen masters like Joko Beck and I uh, didn't really know what I was doing and eventually uh, after many years uh, I was already in my 40s I found Tree Leaf and uh, and a real teacher, uh, and, a, and a sangha. Um, what do you do as a priest, un uh, of tree leaf, and what does it mean for you to be a priest? Uh, that means different things to me at different times. Um, sometimes it means the sangha as an extended family, which we're just here to uh, support each other and uh, motivate each other to practice. Um, other times it's study and learning. Um, other times it's a uh, hard practice by um, putting time and work into difficult things and sometimes opening my mind up to things it doesn't want to be open to, uh, concepts that are new, uh, relationship, uh, conflict, things like that. Uh, what's your favorite tree leaf memory? Uh, by far, it's our Oakland trip, which you can probably uh, find remnants of around uh, the, the searching around the, the Sangha. Um, that's where uh, Pyokan, uh, Koku, um, Shoka, and I were ordained. And uh, we had a great week. We went to San Francisco. We uh, crammed all ourselves into an Uber <laughs> with our rockasus and uh, went to San Francisco Zen Center and went hiking and uh, it was just wonderful. So hopefully we'll we'll get to do that again sometime. Um, what does a normal day look like and how do you practice in your daily life? Um, well, just like for so many of you here, one of the biggest wonders of tree leaf for me is that I can practice anytime and anywhere. Uh, there's no way I would have been able to stick with a practice any other way. Um, there have been years, I mean, in the beginning, um, I joined in 2015, and for a while I really didn't have good internet. Um, and so all I could do was just uh, take an audio recording uh, and go sit outside my work in the morning. I would drive to work and sit in the parking lot and uh, do my sit chanting and sitting there. And, um, you know, eventually I got real internet and a, internet and a real data plan. And um, now I can listen to Zazenkai anytime. Um, I usually drive in with a daughter or two now in the morning. So it usually ends up being lunchtime or some other time of day that I catch a few minutes, um, but it still feels like a little miracle when I hear the, the birds and cicadas in Japan in the background, listening to J uh, Jundo's talks and uh, sit as Azenkai whenever I can. Um, as to what I do, um, um, as many of you know, I'm a, I'm a veterinarian and I own a small animal practice in upstate New York. Um, I'm married and have two daughters. They're uh, almost 19 and 22, but they still live home, partly because of the pandemic. Um, and extending this back to why I stay at Tree Leaf, 
um, because it uh, not just helps me, but has been instrumental and fundamental in allowing me to um, be there for everyone that needs me, including uh, my clients and my employees and my family. Um, when my, my daughters reached their teen years, which six, seven years ago now, um, they both started to suffer from uh, mental illness and self-harm and uh, trying to run a business and uh, keep up with my patients and my clients. And, um, and I lost any sense of control that I had over anything in my life. Um, but I realized too that the control really, because I read Joko Beck, so I knew that the control was really just an illusion. Uh, so I knew somehow that Zen held the answer to that, but I needed a teacher to help me understand what the answers were. Um, and it seems like any of us that come here um, and becomes a member here of the Sangha is setting forth that human vulnerability to some extent um, that, you know, um, that need for us to uh, understand and become aware of how to let things be how they are, because eventually we're all going to come up with against something that isn't how we would have it, uh, how we how we expected it to be, or how we planned it, or how we wanted it. It's our humanness. Um, it's that vulnerability that connects all of us in the sangha through space and time, and uh, it's our it's our our humanness. Um, so kids and family responsibilities, jobs, how do you balance everything? Does your family practice too? Uh, my family does not practice Zen. Um, I don't balance, feel like I balance things well. <laughs> I have, uh, I have uh, ADHD and um, am, uh, I'm on the, on the autistic spectrum uh, a little bit, which uh, means I have a lot of challenges with uh, keeping on track, prioritizing, organizing, socializing, all those things um, that you need to, to do life. So I do drop a lot of balls, um, scramble to catch up on things. Um, that'll probably always be the case, but uh, Tree Leaf has helped me accept that and work with what is and uh, I've met a lot of other people in the Sangha who have similar challenges and um, thank goodness Tree Leaf is here for, for us uh, because if we drop a ball and miss a Zazenkai because we're disorganized and um, had to do something else then you know we can we can uh, be flexible and arrange it around our, our ADHD brains and uh, and we can also push ourselves and, um, you know, go live on video and um, interact at our own pace and speed with with others and that have similar challenges. What do you recall as the decisive moment or tipping point for you to pursue ordination? Um, what, if anything, is different before and after? Um, well, as I said, I had realized that... Um, after learning at Tree Leaf for a couple of years, um, Jundo's teaching, that it really was um, time to really let go, um, to shave my head and just let go of all the craving and the wanting things to be a certain way. That was where the answer lies. Um, but. I mean, not that I could just let everything go, but ordination is a vow to to do to do that. Um, even if I break it and have to start all over again every single day, um, that's what I do. So the difference between before and after ordination. Um, I mean, I followed the precepts before ordination, um, but after ordination, you know, every day I got up. And, um, and I said, okay, today I'm not going to cling and I'm not going to grasp and I'm not going to expect and I'm not going to want. And um, and I just keep coming back to that. Those are my vows um, that it's not about 
me. It's about um, all of us and our inter interconnectedness and, you know, what I can do for others. Uh, do you enjoy all the learning and responsibilities or do you ever wish for the simplicity of being a lay practitioner? Well, whether I enjoy it or not seems to be a little beside the point. <laughs> um, but I guess I would say it's been difficult to stay involved with the learning and responsibility part since the pandemic hit. Um, did pretty good there for the first few years, but um, my profession, I'm grateful it didn't take a hit uh, like so many others this past year, but um, the increase in demand has uh, made it difficult to make room for literally anything else in my life right now besides work, and I'm not so sure um, when that will change, but the, luckily, um, as, as Jundo says, um, being a lay practitioner and being Unsui here at Tree Leaf is really the same. Um, I talked about that sense of human vulnerability that we we share here, and I find that um, keeping aware of that, keeping in touch with the Sangha, even if I'm not really active um, in the daily workings, um, connects me to all the people I help every day, all my clients, um, that sense of, you know, that we're really there in this humanness together and we have the same fears and the same stresses and the same difficulties and obstacles and joys and, and um, gratitudes and um, all those things. Uh, so doing what I do every day is, uh, is deep and difficult practice and it's, it's the same. It's not being a lay practitioner and and being a monastic at Tree Leaf is is really uh, all all the all the same thing. Um, last question: What are you? What are your long term plans? <laughs> um, sorry, this question makes me laugh because I just I don't make long term plans anymore, especially after this past year. <laughs> Um, I had some serious health issues a couple years ago, uh, which caused me to completely uh, derail everything and make completely new plans. And um, then the pandemic came and derailed those plans and uh, I made completely new plans. And I'm just going to take it a day at a time uh, from this point out and be grateful that I, I'm still here. And uh, and be grateful for you all and for Tree Leaf and for for Jundo and uh, all my wonderful brothers and sisters here. And I think that's it. Uh, so any any of you that uh, ever wanna ever wanna talk or uh, uh, or chat, uh, feel free to PM me and. Uh, I may be busy, but I'm always glad to hear from any of you, and uh, thank you for listening.